Good morning, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks for tuning in. Keeper Eric here. Keeper Grace on the camera again. This morning, we're going to talk about bats. And a lot of you may be wondering what the connection is between bats and Mother's Day. And really, there's not much, <laughs> except that our colony of bats is all male. So we thought we'd do something special for your moms and just have all boys for you. Um, the reason we have all boys is because we don't want them to breed because they're prolific breeders. And the zoos that have males and females, they tend to end up with a lot of bats. And we have a fairly small exhibit, so we want to make sure we have a pretty um, consistent number of bats. Uh, we have two types in here. The smaller ones that you see flying around are called Seba's short tailed bats. And they're a central South American species. They're fairly common. They're very widespread all the way from southern Mexico all the way down into Brazil. So we considered doing bats for Cinco de Mayo, but we went with the more iconic species. And then in the top corner of the exhibit, those are called, the bigger ones are called Jamaican fruit bats. And obviously they're from Jamaica and the Caribbean. They're a little bit bigger, but otherwise, they're fairly similar. They get along really well with the Sebas. So right now we have four Jamaican fruit, Jamaican fruit bats and about 116 or so of the Sebas short tail bats. And the ones that are flying all around, those are all Sebas short tail bats. Um, if Grace pans over slightly, you can see the bananas on the tree. They're called fruit bats because that's what they eat. That's all they eat is fruit. And throughout the, the planet, bats eat a whole bunch of different things. The ones we have here in North America are almost, or at least in this part of North America, are almost exclusively insect eaters. So they will eat the mosquitoes, they will eat um, some of the moths, some of the smaller moths, and things like that. If you get down towards um, the southwest, you get more of the bats that are, will eat, that are like pollinators. Uh, they will eat uh, the nectar out of flowers, which makes them excellent pollinators, just like bees and other animals. Some of the desert plants specifically bloom at night so that the bees will be attracted and they can spread the pollen and pollinate the plants. And then in the tropics, you get a lot of fruit bats where there's a lot of fruit. Now, one other type of bat that is very cool, a lot of people are afraid of are called vampire bats. And those are bats that will literally drink the blood of different, usually mammals, because they need something large and they need something more blooded. So it's almost always mammals, so something big like a taper or whatever. And those bats are really awesome. They have sharp little teeth, and their saliva has an anticoagulant, so the blood won't clot, and they also have a little bit of a painkiller. So when they bite the animal, the animal doesn't really know it. And vampire bats will drink a whole bunch of blood really quick, and then their bodies process it really fast. And so they'll sit on the ground for uh, just a couple minutes after they drink all the blood, and then they'll have this really, um, not dilute, but um, their bodies quickly process the blood and they'll pee right away and pee out a whole bunch of weight so they can fly it down. Now, throughout the world there's also, there's, there's a lot of different species of bats, but there's two main types. The megachiropterans, which are the really big ones, well, they're also called flying foxes typically, and then these, what that we see, the ones that we have in North America are called the microchiropterans, and those are the little bats. And there's just like, hundreds and hundreds of species of bats throughout the world. And they all have different roles to play. And obviously nobody wants a bat in their house, but they're actually quite useful for keeping the bug population down. Uh, think about uh, a bat tends to eat about its weight in bugs every night. So if you think there's you know, like a 30, 40 gram bat that's eating 30 or 40 grams of insects every night. So if we didn't have any bats, think about how many more bugs there would be everywhere. But of course, these are fruit bats, so they're gonna, they've got some bananas. They're not really excited about them at the moment, but they usually get, later on, they'll kind of settle down. 
Uh, we're also in here. And many of you know that these microchiropterans, these smaller species of bats, use echolocation. So can we hear the clicks? Is it? I don't know, guys. Can you hear the clicks? That... You can hear the wings. Let's listen for Okay, we don't know if the microphone. I don't, I don't know if uh, my, the microphone on my phone is picking up the clicks that we can hear in here. Right, so you hear these little clicks, and what the bats are doing is they're making these clicking sounds, sending them out to whatever they're flying towards, and then those clicks bounce back at the speed of sound. And so they can use those clicks to kind of build a uh, visual map in their mind of what's ahead a tree branch, a uh, water, a person, a predator. And so it's really cool, they, they do have eyes, bats are, bats are not blind, they can see, but since most of them are active at night, they use that echolocation. And one of the cool things about working with bats is the first time you go in with a group of bats, they will all kind of like buzz your head and fly around you. And what they're doing is making kind of like, um, like a map of your head and your body, what you look like. And then from then on when you walk in, they're not as excited. They're not flying at your head, they're not trying to dive bomb you. And all they're doing when you first come in is they're just trying to get to know you. And then once they do, once they've made that visual map, they're, they're, they don't need to do that again. Um, I've talked a lot, do we have any questions? Are we... uh, somebody noticed the birds, if you wanna. Oh yeah, we have two red-capped cardinals in here. So all, both of these species of bats are Central American and the, the red-capped cardinals are as well. So we saw we, the bats at different times throughout the day will rest and roost. And so we thought we'd put some birds in here just to give you a little bit of uh, some movement, something to see, some color. And we're also hoping that the birds do breed. So we put a little nest basket up and so far nothing, but we've got our fingers crossed that, that they will breed. Um, and Dominic would like to know, do you know how long bats sleep? How long they sleep? Uh, like. Well, bats are, uh, okay, so the, the, the microchiropters, the little bats, are nocturnal, which means they uh, are active at night and sleep during the day. So I would say they're probably active most of the night because they're just out catching prey. And during the day, they sleep. So um, these guys are Central American. Down there, it's about 12 hours a night and 12 hours a day year-round. They don't have those wild... Um, length of day swings that we have up here further north. So they're probably active about 10 or 12 hours a day out feeding and then sleeping the rest. Um, and when they're roosting, they're not always completely sleeping. They will kind of um, be awake and um, they kind of yell at each other a little bit and have little scuffles, little bat scuffles. <laughs> um, the, the wings of a bat, are not like the wings of a bird. The wings of a bird are its arms. And if you would look at a bat, you would notice that the skin of, that the bats used to fly is stretched between their fingers. So they've got arms, but they're mostly flapping with their fingers as to a bird, as opposed to a bird which is going to flap with its whole arm. Whoops. Somebody just, Somebody just ran into a branch. Yeah. Um, when you come to the zoo, they, you'll see a lot of them roosting because they are active at night. Although we have dimmed this exhibit, so hopefully they're a little more active. And then at some point they'll get into the fruit. Oh, this banana's been chewed on. Yeah, I thought somebody was chewing on it earlier. Yeah. Um, so my mom, my mom asked, how, I, hear, I heard that your bats aren't breeding. How long do they live? And how do we get replacements? Uh, there are other zoos throughout the country that do breed bats. So literally when we start getting low, we just call one of these other zoos and they're usually more than happy to catch up some of their bats and send them out. Um, I think, who did we get these from? Omaha? Is that where they came from? Mm, that sounds right. And I think they've got like a thousand of these. Yeah, they have a giant room of bats. Um, so. Um, bats do eat a lot of fruit and they do poop a lot. Uh, their poop is called guano, bat guano, and it's 
uh, builds up really quick, but it also makes a really good uh, fertilizer. So there are places where they do mine with that one for fertilizer, although we don't want to do that. We are wearing our masks today because we want to make sure that we don't pass any of the coronavirus on to bats. Many of you probably heard that um, they think the coronavirus did come from a bat, the COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, and bats are um, really good at um, not being affected by viruses and having them but not showing any symptoms of being affected by them. And that's probably because a lot of the insects they eat, like mosquitoes, do have diseases. And so they can be resistant to those diseases. They're not going to be worried about eating them. Uh, whereas if there's a lot of mosquitoes around that are carrying malaria or African sleeping sickness, that's going to affect us. Uh, bats can't worry about that, otherwise they'd never be able to eat anything. Right. Um, how, Mikhail's asking, how long is their lifespan? How long is their lifespan? That's another question I'm going to have to look up exactly. I think it's just a couple of years. It's not very long. Right. So we, With think, these guys. Yeah, it's, they're probably no more than 10. Yeah. Um, which is pretty good for a small little animal like that. When you consider they're the size of a mouse or so, and a mouse lives about two or three years. Uh, oh, you want to touch on what kind of fruit bats these are again? Yes, I'm sorry. The, the bats you're looking at now are called Siva's short tail bats. And these guys are found all throughout um, tropical, the tropical Americas from Mexico all the way down to Brazil in that area. Very and common species. And we have our second. And the bigger guys over here that are recently There are four big guys up here. Are Jamaicans. Jamaican fruit bats. And they're a Caribbean species. There's a lot of islands around the country that don't have any native mammals except bats. Because bats are able to fly long distances, they can fly over the ocean and colonize these islands. Um, whereas something like a rabbit or a rat would have to swim, and they're not going to make it all the way. So a lot of islands around the world have native bats, but not really any other native mammals. <laughs> Well, okay. here, oh, yeah. Here, here. No, I just had a comment that says, my name is Jerry, I like bats. <laughs> I, I love bats. bats. I think bats are awesome. You know, I wish I could like, show you one of them up close. Not yeah, none of, them, none of them will let us catch no, them. No, they don't like, we can go over to the door. They have cute little faces. They do have adorable faces if one of them let me get close. Right. Look at that one. No. Oh, no. No. And bats, like I said, they do a really important job eating all of those insects. So again, if you have one in your house, make sure you get somebody who can get it out safely, call a pest control company. Right. But um, There's otherwise some... leave them alone because without bats, we would be overrun with right. mosquitoes. And can you imagine how many mosquito bites you get if we didn't have bats? <laughs> oh. And if you're ever afraid of a bat, that would just whack me in the face. And <laughs> I think I got that on camera. Right, thanks. <laughs> My plan failed. <laughs> um, it didn't hurt. It didn't bite me. It didn't no. get caught in my hair. So they're not going to hurt you. No. Um, when people have trouble with bats is when they try to pick them up or catch them themselves in their house. That's when they get bit. And we all know bats can carry rabies. These bats do not carry rabies because they are shut off from the rest of the world. There's no way for them to get it. Um, but the wild bats can, and so just be real careful. Leave them be or call some professional yeah. to help you. <laughs> they're kind of having trouble today. I think they're, right. they're not used to seeing so people can, being wild. So we're going to head out. We're going to head out of the exhibit. We can still answer bad questions if you come up with them. So we're going to carefully use our little double door system. Can we both go at the same time? Yeah. Okay. We're going to look at the door for a second. Okay. Door shut. Okay. All right, and then we were going to show you. So this is the rest of their diet. Yeah. That's what they get um, in the evening. A bunch of fruit. Oops. Oh, we dropped some. Fruits fall And then this is. Um, like a. I'm blanking. It's like, like a, a primate pudding. It's is like what a primate we call pudding. It. it smells really good, but. I've tried it. It doesn't. It doesn't taste very good. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, a ground-up powder that we mix some water in. Yeah. And the primates like it. The primates love it. 
The bats love right. it. Get all the primate putting, yeah, off, my primate hands. putting off your hands. Alright, so everybody who donated last week, we appreciate it, especially for Giving Tuesday. I think the society said they, they raised close to their goal. Did you hear that? Uh, yeah, I think Jamie told me about 5,000. Yeah, they got close to 5,000. So thank you, everybody. We really appreciate it. And everybody who donated through the Facebook uh, button last week did have their name put in this uh, bucket here. So we're going to draw a name. Make sure I really stir <laughs> My mom commented on the, I'm assuming that was the, I've tried that primate pudding. We try everything because. <laughs> she goes, LOL, that's our daughter. <laughs> like, if you don't try it, <laughs> you don't know what they're trying to eat. And it's, if you know that it tastes bad, you know what you have to do to find it. Right. Okay, the winner of this painting. The tortoise painting. Is Ivy Catherine Craig. So oh, fun. Watching Ivy. I think she's donated um, a couple times. Yeah. Um, contact us if you know Ivy and she has a contact us. Let her know to donate. And then this week, Grace made this necklace. And what it is, is there's a piece of reticulated python shed in here. And then we put a colored glass um, circle over it yep yeah i just took the pendant and um smashed the a shed from our reticulated python in there and yeah glued it together so like grace makes these we do sell these in our gift shop so if you well okay so whoever donates this week through the facebook donate button is going to be put in the drawing to win this but we do also sell these in the gift shop so if it's something that you don't win and you really want one um contact us and we'll find a way um, to get you one, so you can buy. My mom is wearing hers now. She said, <laughs> oh, "They're very nice." I don't usually wear necklaces personally, but it's it's really pretty and it's a great um, conversation starter. Um, it'd make a good um, late Mother's Day gift, right, for your mom. So, um, um, they're various prices, Mickey. I think I don't know because I've I've made necklaces and bookmarks. I'll have to get back to you on what what those are right, priced we at. Can do a post about it. We can do a post about it later on. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for donating. We appreciate it. Um, happy Mother's Day to my wife, to my mom, to all the moms in my life. Did you say something? Yeah, I do. Can you switch? Um, oh, no, I, I selfie styled it. <laughs> okay. Um, happy Mother's Day to my mom. I know you're watching. Okay. And also, um, happy Mother's Day and happy birthday to my grandma. My grandma turns 96 today. So, happy Mother's Day. Um, I think Jay will be with you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.